Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be doing insect macro photography with this, the OM1 and the 90mm macro and some shots I'll be using this, my homemade macro diffuser and at the end of the video I'll go into a bit more detail about this diffuser too. So a few weeks ago I visited one of my favourite local reserves. It was 7am so most insects were still warming up and the light was not too harsh so I started off not using my flash setup and instead using ISO 400 with a reasonably wide aperture to keep my shutter speed fast enough for sharp shots while using aperture priority. This gatekeeper posed nicely, but wasn't the nicest shot. This willow emerald damselfly was nicely lit by a patch of morning sunlight. There were a few gatekeepers warming in the sun, most in awkward positions, but this one was in a more open area. I pushed the ISO up to 800 to keep the shutter speed high while closing down the aperture to get it all in focus. Then went in for a close up. All the shots in this video at ISO 400 and above have been put through Topaz Denoise just to clean them up a bit. It started to warm up a bit and these larger insects were getting a bit too active so I headed down to another meadow where I found this recently emerged six spot burnet moth. I put the flash and the diffuser on and shot using ISO 400 to avoid a black background. The site is great as it offers a great selection of habitats and microhabitats, meadow, bramble thickets and hedgerows and wooden margins. This patch of brambles and low scrub was acting as a sun trap. It was here I found this seven spot ladybird which are a pretty shiny subject which can be an issue with flash but thankfully the diffuser worked quite well. But it's when I found this patch of thistles things really got going, they were covered in insects, flies galore, this furry drone fly gave me a run around. But I got one nice side on shot, just about. The peculiar flies posed much more. I got both male and females, and even some close ups. And this very close up. I also got this closely related hornet hoverfly, another of the giant hoverfly species in the Volucella genus. They were constantly crawling on the flowers, so it's just a matter of pre focusing and anticipating where they would look at you. These are the best of lots of out of focus shots. The large flash also helps here, as it means there is a very short or no flash recharge time, so I can take three or four shots in a burst if I need to. I also got this third giant hoverfly species, Volucella inans. I was pleased to see this bee wolf, a solitary wasp that is a predator of honeybees. As with most pollinating insects, the issue was its head was buried in the flower most of the time. But after a few tries, I got this one shot with his head up. The furry drone fly, or another one, peered on the flower, and I got some better shots of it. In the woodland margin, I found this small shield bug, and after some standard top down shots, I went in for a two times macro close up. It's a parent bug, so called because they guard their eggs and young, which is quite unusual for insects. There was a large patch of sweet pea flowers and feeding on them were five or six brimstone butterflies, more than I've ever seen in one place at one time. Brimstones are notorious for not landing and posing for photos, but these were landing. I took off the flash and got some shots with natural light, although it was a bit awkward to get them without their heads buried in a flower. There's a small pond there and it had mostly dried out, but on the surface was the large pond skater species known as the lake skater. They are skittish and hop away as soon as you approach, but I noticed if you waited, they were coming back over to the shore edge. So with a bit of patience, I managed to get the camera close enough, even using the diffuser. And as I was shooting into the sun, I used a flash as a fill-in. I probably should have used high-speed sync here, in hindsight. But the shots came out okay. This smaller half-grown nymph came in for a close-up. It was about the size of a standard pond skater. And this little bunch of 4mm pond skater nymphs was right near the shore. I then came across another area of sweet pea. I had passed it earlier, but now the sun was shining on it and it was alive with insects. There were more brimstone butterflies here, so off again came the flash and I tried some more shots of them. I only managed this one. But there were some other interesting species there, so I put the flash and the diffuser back on. These leafcutter bees were visiting the flowers. I managed to capture how the sweet pea stamen wraps around the bee as it feeds. I wanted to capture away some of them were sticking their abdomen in the air. Also visiting the flowers were carder bees. Again, as with all these pollinating insects, it was a matter of timing 
an angle to get them without their head buried in the flower. Picked up my camera bag after 20 minutes of photographing these insects, and in just that short amount of time, these black ants have brought up some of their pupa to warm it underneath it. I got a couple of shots as they rushed to get them back underground. And lastly, I got this close-up of the tiny red flower you can find in the centre of a white carrot flower head. It was a great day out, lots of good photos, and just shows how well this setup works. So as I promised, let's talk in more detail about this homemade macro diffuser. Now I should start off saying that this was not designed by me, this was designed by Choose Photography on YouTube, if you look him up. I'll put a link down in the description. And it's made out of three sheets of polypropylene plastic. So this is the diffuser broken down into three pieces of polypropylene plastic sheeting. So we've got two bits of white here, a small piece and a big piece. This is the main diffuser section. We've got this large black A3 sheet, which is the sort of main body of the diffuser and a small supporting piece in here, which I'll explain later. And as you can see, both these bits that are inside the diffuser have been covered in silver tape to reflect the flash and sort of concentrate it through the diffuser piece at the front. It's all 0.5 millimeter thickness. You can get all of this stuff on eBay and sites like that. I've also got the lens attachment here from a Raynox macro thing. You'll see what the point of that is. And just to point out, this isn't my normal flash. Um, I usually use a Godox, but I can't find it for when I'm doing this video. So when it comes to putting it together, you've got all these poppers I've put in. Again, you can find the poppers and the thing to fasten them on eBay, no problem. I tend to fasten up that one first. Then I put the flash in. Then you put the uh, strength and thing in. This can also be used to mount an LED light, should you so wish. And now I should have put another popper in there, but I haven't bothered yet. Now, just to attach the diffuser to the front. Again, using the poppers. And it's ready to go on the camera. So, slide it on, mount the flash onto the flash. Now this is where things get a bit more tricky, because if I just put this on here like this, the attachment ring, which is quite easy to do when you're looking on a camera. Problem is, that has a tendency to slip off like that, which will ruin your photos. So that is where the Raynox lens adapter comes in. So slide that over the lens. I'm making this look far more difficult because I'm trying to do it on a camera. There we go. Oh, not quite there. There we go. And the only bonus is now, of course, if I want to put my Raynox on, I can just put my Raynox on. I hope you found that useful. I've got lots of other videos on insect macro photography and using flash diffusers to do so on my channel. So do go check them out. There's links down in the description. I've got lots more videos on wildlife, nature photography and wildlife filmmaking plans. So do give us a subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. And please give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye for now.